Okay, can you tell me who you are and what your connection is to North Kilworth? Well, hello Stephen, I'm Peter Jones and I'm a member of St Andrew's Church PCC. Okay. Uh, I've been in North Kilworth now with Liz, my wife, in Ivy House for around 34 years. Right, okay. And we are here, why are we, why are we standing here? Well, we're standing here in front of the church that's been around now for uh, well over a thousand years and uh, we're just coming to the end of our major project to bring the church into the standards that are required for the next thousand years, basically. <laughs> so lockdown has not stopped this, uh, this project. Can you tell me about the project? What, what size is it? What's happening? What's being done? Yes, indeed. In terms of scale, we're looking at expenditure of the order of £180,000 all up, wow. uh, excluding VAT, which of course we can reclaim from the uh, uh, beneficent arms of Her Majesty's Government <laughs> under the rules, uh, fortunately. But uh, this has taken five years, in fact, and uh, it originated f over well, more than five years ago. We, we did have a healthy balance of about 30 or 40,000 pounds for ongoing repairs that had been built up. But uh, we, all the PCC felt that that was gradually being eroded. So uh, it was really decided to bite the bullet and to go out for on a major fundraising campaign five years ago. So who's contributed to this project then? We're greatly indebted to, uh, first and foremost, in terms of scale of award, to the diocese. And then after that comes uh, a couple of, well, £10,000 awards from Leicester Historic Churches Trust, National Churches Trust, uh, the, the uh, Cope Charity, and uh, a number of others, including... Um, Oh gosh! It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, just pause there. I can. I can. Once you got what you want to say, just leave a space. It's and then Gar Garfield Weston. We've got to include. Okay. And um, oh, and the yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. And indeed, uh, people like Garfield Weston, who uh, have a strong religious ethos in their awards, and additionally the National Lottery, and last but by no means least, the Kilworth Challenge and our own parish council. Each, each of those units has tended to uh, put money into reserved activities and uh, so they tend to associate with particular aspects of the project. So give me an overview, what's being done, what will be different because of this, uh, this money that's been spent? In terms of the building itself we had fundamental basic things to address which were primarily around the issues of damp and structural decay. Uh, that's the first point. The second point of course is that really whilst contemplating this level of expenditure we really had to think about the future uses of the building. Rural uh, churches like this one are under severe pressure. They're not attractive for new incumbents coming in largely because we're in groups of maybe five, six, seven or more churches and uh, the congregations tend to be small. So looking to the future, we decided fairly early on that we had to address the need to bring the church back into the community and to make it viable for village events in terms primarily of comfort, attractiveness for a building that's very much in the hearts and minds of the village. So what, what is different now that, that, was, that was not there before? The big changes we've initiated compared to what it used to be like was to address the fundamentals of people's comfort. Yeah. Uh, we had to, we, uh, we, we do indeed host weddings here for an adjacent large hotel complex. So toilets and the basics in that direction, ba baby changing facilities were an absolute essential. Uh, then the next requirement, of course, relates to heat uh, and then uh, we've re effectively put in a brand new boiler, we've uh, blown out the tubes, put in additional radiators to supplement the French drains which have been put in to improve the, uh, the, the absence, well, to remove and eradicate the damp that, that plagued the earlier building. Yeah. Then uh, moving up from that, we uh, approach the issue of uh, pew removal. We have uh, widened the open public space area and we plan to introduce some comfortable chairs there 
uh, to supplement the remaining Victorian pews that we've been obliged to retain. New floors, moving the font, complete redecoration, and uh, that takes us into then the final mile, which was a, a storage facility in new uh, white oak, basically, to a very high standard, uh, storage cupboards for village societies to conserve their records in a building that is likely, we hope, to be here in a thousand years' time, and to show future generations what, uh, what happened in the village societies for the last 50 or 60 years. I've just had a sneak preview with you of, of something that's quite exciting that's happening in, on, the, on the ceiling of part of the church. Do you want to talk about that? Yes, the last major investment in the church was undertaken inevitably by the Victorians in their uh, uh, outgoing enthusiasm for renovation uh, in the 1860s, I think it was, 1870s. Uh, and of course, over that period of time, 130 years, 150 years, there's been a gradual decay, which nobody's noticed from one decade to the next. But in undertaking this task, we did notice that the frescoes that were effectively uh, on wallpaper, they weren't painted, but the frescoes uh, in, in the chancel looked quite interesting, albeit Victorian, but all, albeit very much in character and keeping with the wonders that we perceive for the building going forward. Uh, and then with the cooperation of information technology and committed individuals in the village, in the advertising industry, we've been able to produce what we think is a pretty accurate replica of the original Victorian decorations. And I, having, like you, seen it for the first time today, albeit about three quarters complete, it's really produced a wow factor that's uh, just vacuumed the lungs, the air out of my lungs anyway, and I think it had a similar effect on you. Yes, it's and, absolutely, uh, absolutely gorgeous and, and really makes, that, makes it a statement when you come into the church. There's also a, a much improved lighting system, isn't there? There's a much improved lighting system and uh, whether we like it or not, we have to accept that these buildings have to be uh, adaptable for use, for flexible purposes. What we hope we've managed to do is to retain the religious ethos, obviously, certainly in the chancel, and the chancel, by the nature of the, uh, the layout of the church, can be isolated and, and uh, reserved and produce that special uh, feeling of uh, quietness and uh, an area for contemplation. But on the other hand, we hope that the building can return to the uses that churches had in the medieval period and before where they often represented uh, a, a point of security, an area where the village market was undertaken, an area where people uh, caroused indeed uh, and enjoyed life as a community and shared both their concerns and their worries as well as their good news and their joy and their births and indeed sadly as we see around us their deaths. So that's a f tremendous vision for the future. So uh, lockdown happened, how did that affect the, the progress of the building works? What changed? We had gone out to tender around about September 2019 and uh, appointed contractors and the contractor was scheduled to start in February. In fact, uh, of course, then, of course, lockdown commenced. So after clearing the building, we effectively were on pause for around two months. So the original expected completion uh, in July, August has now been deferred. We hope now we'll be clear and uh, ready to fire on all cylinders around the 1st of November. So, have there been any discoveries uh, during this, uh, term, this time of uh, renovation and exploration of the building? Well, anybody that's undertaken repairs in their own home know that, uh, know, will understand that when you embark on projects like this, you, you in, almost invariably find uh, problems. And uh, our budget actually went up by an incremental level of about £10,000. The good news, however, the upside of that, was that we made some fascinating discoveries. In the course of the French drain work, which was the stage one process, 
we found uh, remains dating back to an embankment from the Neolithic period, around 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. Uh, suggests that over in the south east corner of the church there was a habitation, a uh, small settlement of uh, early Kilworthians and uh, inevitably I suppose the church was founded and grew on that original site or possibly a communal uh, village centre uh, and even in those days, of course, albeit with a strong pagan emphasis, the church moved in and inherited that pagan legacy. And we have evidence of it. Those remains are being returned and they'll no doubt be graced with an exhibition cabinet once we finish the, uh, the new building. And what were the remains that you discovered? We discovered uh, loom weights. Uh, we actually have examples where there are thumbprints. It's quite chilling to, to look at thumbprints from 4,000 years ago. Uh, these loom weights are quite distinct. They're triangular in shape and they have a hole at one end and they were used to weight the cross threads, the warp and the weft, as the shuttle moved back and forward so that the operator, uh, albeit fairly crudely, could uh, establish a reasonably fast speed with the uh, with the weaving and then hot on the heels of that in, t in the interior of the church our efforts to replace the uh, dodgy carpets and the uh, moth-eaten woodwork uh, revealed uh, convex tops of uh, medieval tombs that uh, were in crypts underneath which uh, hadn't been documented uh, but we've managed to adjust the floor level to, uh, to suit and uh, no doubt those knights can now uh, very shortly uh, rest in slumber yet again. Uh, in, the, in other various areas we've discovered uh, etchings on glass and uh, of course the removal of the font was expected to produce something but there's nothing underneath. Uh, I suspect that's because the font was moved by the Victorians only a mere 150 years ago. So we reversed that process and moved it back alongside the door. But yes, a real voyage of discovery and indeed it's enabled us to add to the already fairly comprehensive history of the church that is posted on our website and is available in print. And what is the address of the website? Uh, if you're uh, uh, fired up to investigate a little more of the church, then I suggest you go to www.northkilworthchurch.org and uh, I think that's the right address. Um, it'll certainly get you there because believe me, we are the one and only. <laughs> so is there anything else that uh, you need to mention from the uh, refurbishment project, uh, Pete? Nearly forgot. Yes, there was one thing that wasn't to do with the interior of the church, where most of the work's been concentrated. We mustn't forget the big external project, which is our clock. The clock was put in by the Victorians. Uh, we've got a clock on two faces, uh, the west side and uh, the north side. But it is an important part of village life. It rings out the hours. And uh, sadly, however, since its refurbishment about 20 years ago, the timbers had rotted on the lower half. So thanks to a contribution of seasoned uh, American oak from MBJ Joinery, whose uh, two uh, chief executives and uh, chairman live in the village, uh, they donated some molded timber to the original pattern and we've uh, managed to completely replace the rotted timbers and reinstate it. So uh, we can now look upon our gilded wonder and uh, announce the hours to everybody in the hope that they will come and uh, fall on their knees at our first Thanksgiving service. Thank you. <laughs>